Thank you. Uh, I'll start with some background and motivation. So in a combinatorial auction, uh, you have M items that an auctioneer wants to allocate among N bidders. Now each bidder has a valuation function V sub I on subsets of the M items. And we will presume that the VIs are non-negative and monotone. Uh, the goal is for the auctioneer to output an allocation of the items, meaning a partition of the M items into N subsets, S1 through Sn, where bidder I gets set Si. And in this talk, uh, the auctioneer's goal will be to achieve good welfare, where welfare is defined as the sum over the bidder's I of Vi of Si. Uh, but the challenge for the auctioneer is that the auctioneer does not know the VIs. Uh, instead, the auctioneer needs to communicate with the bidders in order to figure out the VIs. And so what we want to know is how much does the auctioneer need to communicate with the bidders in order to achieve good welfare. So in general, you can't guarantee non-trivial welfare. Uh, you need to make assumptions about the function's VI. And the particular assumption that we are going to make is that the VIs are subadditive. Uh, and what that means is that the, val the sum of the values for two sets is at least the value for the union of the sets. So a natural question then is, how well can an auctioneer approximate the welfare of N bidders with subadditive valuations if the auctioneer is allowed to communicate a polynomial amount in M and N? Uh, the answer to the, this question is that you can a achieve a one-half approximation, and this is very non-trivial. Uh, and it is provable that you cannot do better than a one-half plus one over two n approximation. So we understand this problem pretty well asymptotically with n. Uh, but what about small n? In particular, what about n equals two? Uh, so our particular question uh, is how well can an auctioneer approximate the optimal welfare of two bidders with subadditive valuations if the bidder is allowed to com communicate a polynomial amount in M, the number of items? And if you're wondering why specifically two bidders, I'll get to that. So you know, why this particular question? Uh, first, it's an important gap in our understanding of the topic of welfare maximization. Uh, second, the two-bidder case is particularly theoretically interesting for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which is a connection observed by Shahar Dubzinski recently between truthful auctions and simultaneous non-truthful auctions in the case of two-bidders specifically. Uh, and also there is a co uh, connection to the price of anarchy of auctions. So in our setting, uh, there are two bidders, Alice and Bob, uh, who have valuation functions VA and VB. And our goal is to find a set S to give to Alice and S bar to Bob so that VA of S plus VB of S bar is large. Now, it turns out that in the case of two bidders, it is trivial to get a one half approximation to the optimal welfare. Here's one thing you could do. You could give the entire bundle of M items to either Alice or Bob at random. Uh, this gets you expected welfare one half times VA of M plus VB of M, which by subadditivity, sorry, which by monotonicity is at least one half times the, uh, the welfare of any allocation. Another thing you could do is give all M items to whoever values that bundle the most. Or you could assign each item independently at random to either Alice or Bob. And the last protocol is the only one that actually relies on subadditivity. And you know, it's the only one that's not trivial to see why it works, but it does. Uh, now notice that two of these protocols, the first and the third, 
requires zero communication between the auctioneer and the bidders. And yet, we do not know of any efficient protocol that gets a better than one half approximation. And on the other hand, the best known hardness result is that we can't beat three fourths. So this is a rather unfortunate state of affairs because we know how to get a half, it's trivial. We don't know how to do better. Ideally, we should either figure out how to do better or prove that the, the, the one half approximation trivial mechanism we have is optimal. So that brings us to our result, uh, which is in fact that the trivial mechanism is the best you can do. Uh, in particular, any protocol, deterministic or randomized, that achieves a constant better than one half approximation to the optimal welfare requires communication exponential in the number of items. Um, this is also true for the decision version of the problem. And we also showed that this bound that we have is tight uh, down to the one over log m term. So now I want to show you why beating a one half approximation is hard. But before I do that, I want to tell you why showing that beating a one half approximation is hard is hard. So in order to show that beating a one half approximation is hard, we need to find some two valuations, VA and VB, such that it's hard to figure out how to beat a one half approximation. So observe first that VA of M then has to roughly equal VB of M. Because if one of them is much larger, then you can give the entire bundle of items to that person, and that'll beat a one half approximation. More importantly, VA and VB need to satisfy a property or come close to satisfying a property that I'm going to call complement additivity. I'm going to say that V, evaluation function, is complement additive if for every subset T of M, V of T plus V of T bar equals V of M. Now notice that for V equal to VA or VB, uh, V of T plus V of T bar is at least V of M. That's just by subadditivity. Uh, but in fact, I'm saying that it needs to roughly equal V of M. And the reason for that is that if V, say VA of T plus VA of T bar is much larger than VA of M, then either giving T to Alice and T bar to Bob or vice versa will get you good welfare. Uh, and notice that this is something that Alice can determine on her own is true. So, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, tell you about a proof sketch for our result for deterministic protocols, uh, showing that no deterministic protocol can beat a half. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is that some of the ideas that we developed will be a stepping stone toward the proof that no randomized protocol can beat a half. So our approach here was a reduction from the equality problem. The equality problem is a well-known communication problem that is hard for deterministic protocols. So in the equality problem, Alice has a bit string A, Bob has a bit string B. Um, they both have length K, and the goal is for them to figure out whether their bit strings are the same. And this takes K bits of communication for any deterministic protocol. So our approach will be to reduce from equality. So given an input A to Alice and B to Bob, they are going to transform their inputs into valuation functions VA and VB, such that good welfare is achievable if and only if their original input bit strings were different. This will be a reduction from equality and will show that the, our welfare problem is also hard. Now, notice that these VA and VB that you get from the reduction must necessarily be nearly complement additive. And that's just from our discussion in the previous slide, uh, which said that 
if they aren't nearly complement additive, then good welfare is achievable. So in pursuit of this reduction, we need to find some sort of class of subadditive valuation functions to base our reduction on. Uh, and it turns out for reasons that you can ask me about later that um, there's really only one natural choice and uh, that is the set cover valuation um, introduced by FIGA in 2006 and later used by Bowalkar and Roughgarden in 2011. Um, so the, let script S be a collection of subsets of M, S1 through SK. We are going to define the set cover valuation F script S of T to be the minimum number of these K sets that you need to take so that their union contains T. So here's an example. Um, script S consists of these six sets, S1 through S6. So FS of the set 1, 3 is 1, because 1, 3 can be covered with just one set, namely S1. FS of 1, 4, 5, on the other hand, is 3, because the set 1, 4, 5 can be covered with the sets S1, S2, and S5, but you can't do better than that. You can't cover it in fewer than three sets. So you might be wondering, can we use FS as the basis for our reduction from equality? Um, and the answer is that we can't. And the reason for that is that FS fails this notion of complement additivity. In particular, you can typically find a set T with the property that the number of sets you need to cover T plus the number of sets you need to cover T bar is much larger than the number of sets you need to cover M. So with that in mind, we want to engineer a different but similar sort of function that does satisfy the complement additivity property. And we are going to call this the truncated set cover valuation. FSL of t, where l is an even positive integer, and you should think of l as growing slowly with m. So FSL of t is defined as follows. If FS of t is small, less than L over two, then we define FSL of T to equal FS of T. If FS of T bar is small, less than L over two, we define FSL of T to equal L minus FS of T bar. And otherwise we define it to equal L over two. Now you might be wondering, is this even well defined? Could the first two cases of our definition conflict if for instance, um, T, and T bar can both be covered in fewer than L over two sets. And the answer is that it is well defined so long as FS of M is at least L. So long as this entire set of M items cannot be covered in fewer than L sets. So for now we are going to assume that FSL is well defined. And if it is, then yes indeed it is still subadditive. Furthermore, uh, you can see just by looking at this definition that FSL is complement additive. In particular, FSL of T plus FSL of T bar is equal to L for every set T. So here's an example for illustration. Uh, take the same sets as earlier and L equal to four. <clears throat> so FS of one, three is one. So by the first case of our definition, FSL of 1, 3 is also 1. That means that by the second case of our definition, FSL of 2, 4, 5, 6 is L minus 1, which is 3. On the other hand, neither the sets 1, 4, 5 or 2, 3, 6 can be covered in fewer than two of these six sets, which means that FSL for both sets equals 2. So now I can tell you about our reduction from equality. So let Alice have input A uh, equal to the bit string A1 dot 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 AK. Bob have input B, B1 dot 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 BK. Before the protocol even starts, Alice and Bob are going to pick some subsets of the M items, S1 through SK. 
then for each, then Alice is going to construct a collection of subsets of M script A as follows. For each I, Alice is going to add SI to script A if AI equals one. And if AI equals zero, she's going to add SI bar to script A. And Bob is going to construct script B similarly from his input string B. And then Alice's valuation function is going to be F script A L and Bob's is gonna be F script B L. So then if their input strings are the same, then that means that their valuation functions are the same. F script AL is going to equal F script BL, which by the complement additivity property means that no matter which set T you give to Alice and T bar to Bob, their welfare is going to be L. So the optimal welfare is L. On the other hand, if A isn't equal to B, and say that script A therefore contains some set SI, and script B contains SI bar, then Alice has welfare, has value L minus one for SI bar. And that's because the set SI can be covered by just one of Alice's sets, namely SI. And similarly, Bob will have welfare L minus one for SI, for SI. And thus, the total welfare will be two times L minus one, which is nearly double L. And this completes our reduction. Uh, we've proved the deterministic version of the theorem. We've shown that given two instances, uh, given an instance of equality, we can, Alice and Bob can transform their bit strings into valuations such that uh, good welfare is achievable if and only if their original strings were different. Except for a caveat, which is that we need S1 through SK to be such that FAL and FBL are guaranteed to be well-defined. But it turns out that you can always find such sets um, so long as K grows exponentially with M and L logarithmically with M. All right, uh, I'll go over a couple additional results. Um, starting with our extension of this to randomized protocols. So it's not obvious how to extend our result for randomized protocols because efficient randomized protocols for equality exist. On the other hand, um, you, know, you might think to reduce from disjointness, but it turns out that our construction is really tied to equality. Um, if you want to reduce from disjointness, you sort of need to start from scratch. So maybe you can do something similar to what we did with equality. In particular, maybe you can define a notion of near equality, which is hard for even randomized protocols and reducible to our welfare problem. And that's exactly what we did. We defined a communication problem called exist far sets. Uh, so in this uh, problem, Alice gets input script A, which is a collection of sets S1 through SK of, uh, that are subsets of M, and Bob gets T1 through TK, such that for each I, SI and TI are either nearly disjoint or nearly the same. And their goal is to return yes if and only if there is an I such that SI and TI are nearly disjoint. Uh, and we showed using information complexity that um, this is hard for randomized protocols. Uh, it takes omega of k communication. And also, uh, this is reducible to our welfare problem. And that completes the proof. So just briefly, we had a positive result uh, for a class of value, uh, for a hierarchy of classes of valuations called the subadditive MPH hierarchy, which is a hierarchy of valuations slightly narrower than subadditive. And an implication of our result was that our hardness result, one half plus o, over, o of one over log m, had a matching upper bound of one half plus omega of one over log m. And so our lower bound was in fact tight to lower order terms. So to recap, earlier I said that if you have a trivial protocol and you don't know whether you can do better, you should either figure out how to do better or prove that you can't. 
prove that the uh, trivial protocol is optimal. And that's exactly what we did. Um, let me tell you about another case uh, in which we have a trivial protocol and we don't know how to do better. That is uh, two-player truthful mechanisms for a class of valuations known as XOS. There, it is trivial to get a one-half approximation truthful protocol, and we can get a three-quarters approximation non-truthful protocol. Um, but we don't know whether we can get a better than one-half approximation truthful protocol. And I've thought about this problem for a bit, and I think it's very interesting. Uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>